The first groups of hostages being released by Hamas nearly 50 days after they were captured in that barbaric October 7th terror attack that killed over 1,200 people. 13 Israelis were freed, and the IDF confirms they are back in Israel. Along with the 10 Thai hostages and one Filipino national, they were released separately under a separate deal. A total of 50 Israelis are expected to be freed over the next four days as part of the ceasefire deal that was arranged in exchange for 150 Palestinian prisoners. We're getting new videos showing a convoy of Red Cross ambulances carrying those hostages out of Gaza. You see it there. But the uplifting sight of their captivity ending comes as American hostages are still being held in Gaza. That includes Abigail Adan. She turns four years old today. They're not expected to be included in today's release, but we remain hopeful that they will in the future. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, meanwhile, is monitoring the situation as this fragile ceasefire deal with Hamas unfolds. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany, and joining me today, Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce, director of the Tech Policy Center at the Heritage Foundation, Kara Frederick, Restoring America editor for the Washington Examiner, Kaylee McGee-White, and Fox News contributor and columnist for The Messenger, Joe Concha. Well, let's go straight to Trey Yanks, live at Hatzerim Air Base in southern Israel with the latest. Trey. Hey, Kaylee, good afternoon. We do expect those hostages to be brought here to the Hatzarim Air Base in southern Israel. We can now confirm they are in Israeli territory. And now we should change our wording. They are no longer hostages. They are finally home. These 13 Israelis have gone through 49 days of hell, truly. And the entire population of Israel breathing a sigh of relief at this moment tonight. As we understand, according to the Israeli Defense Forces, they are accompanying these hostages, special forces and also Shin Bet security forces, making sure that they get the appropriate medical attention. We understand that the military has assigned a soldier to each individual person. They also will have doctors and psychologists working around the clock to ensure they have everything that they need. We saw some video earlier today, the military preparing noise canceling headphones and sunglasses and blankets for these people. They have, in many cases, been living in tunnels or in rooms sheltered from the outside world after they were dragged into Gaza on October 7th. We are getting more details, too, on where these individuals are from. Early reports indicate many are from the community of Niroz, a small kibbutz that sits on the border with Gaza. We reported there where so many dozens of people were killed during that massacre. There are also reports indicating that the individuals released will include mothers and their children. And so you can just imagine how many families across Israel today are just overjoyed that these these people have been released as part of this larger deal that was negotiated by the Qataris. Kaylee. Trey, Kibbutz near Oz is home to little Kafir, the youngest hostage, now 10 months old, his brother Ariel, his mom Shiri. We talk about them often here on Outnumbered. I know we don't have any names currently that we can report to our audience, but I did hear you mention a mother and a daughter were among these hostages. Is that correct? That is correct. And we understand there may be uh, multiple mothers and daughters released as part of this uh, larger deal. And we are getting in names right now, actually, of the hostages. And I see on this list, you might remember a few weeks ago, Kaylee, we talked about this boy that was turning nine years old, Ohad, the little boy with glasses. We brought you his photo. And it, this was probably six weeks ago we talked about him. And he is among the list back in Israel. And so there are, are so many of these people who the milestones that passed as they were in <laughs> captivity, they will be returning to loved ones tonight. Family members will be able to speak with them on the phone before actually seeing them in person in some cases. They'll be taken to hospitals in central Israel where they will receive that specialized care. Additionally, one other name that's on the list that, that is quite interesting is an older woman who was previously declared dead by the factions inside Gaza, an indication that Hamas and Islamic Jihad may have been trying to use psychological terror against the Israeli people saying that some hostages were dead when they actually weren't. So again, you can imagine the relief of her family. It just gives you a sense of, of how unpredictable this situation is. And really, until the moment that these individuals crossed into Israel, we were not able to confirm that they were all safe and OK. You started to see this video trickle out from the Rafah crossing between Gaza and Egypt. And it gave some hope 
to this country because they could see there were elderly women among the group. They had some assistance as they were walking, but they seemed broadly okay. Some children and, and even some of the, the people waving to the, the individuals that were standing on the side of the road. So this was facilitated again by Qatar, who helped to negotiate the deal between Israel and Hamas. The plan was to get them into the hands of the Red Cross, then go into Egypt, where they would be met by Shin Bet, Israel's security agency, to confirm their identities, then travel into Israel, we understand, actually through the Kerem Shalom crossing, which is normally a crossing for goods into Gaza. They are now on their way to Hatsarim Air Base, where we are at right now, we understand. They will be evaluated again to see what sort of medical treatment that they need and then go on to local hospitals in the central part of Israel. But again, tonight we can report 13 Israelis have returned into Israel as part of this larger deal that was negotiated on behalf of Qatar. And remember, this is just day one of what is expected to be four days of a ceasefire. And I do just want to, and uh, my producer just confirming to me now, they are on their way here as we speak. So possibly later in the program, we'll actually be able to show you that bus as it enters this air base behind me. Uh, but again, this will just be a staging point to get them to other medical facilities. As I was saying, though, this is day one of a four day ceasefire. Israelis hoping to get 50 of their citizens out as part of this deal. Kaylee. Trey, so, so you've shared with our viewers, Ohad is among the hostages released. Little Ohad, we talked about him on Outnumbered. He celebrated his ninth birthday in the hands of Hamas. He's a beautiful young boy with glasses. Our viewers may remember seeing his picture. So nine-year-old Ohad, we understand, is freed. Uh, praise God, we prayed for him and our family. Uh, but I, I want to ask you this, Trey, have you gotten any indication? I know there was debate as to whether they would come via helicopter with those noise-canceling headphones, sunglasses uh, to shield these little children, their eyes, these mothers, or whether they would come via bus or some vehicle. Any indication yet? Yeah, so it appears they are going to come in a bus. They had this helicopter on standby just in case any of the individuals were in desperate need of immediate medical attention. But again, based on the images that we saw, they appear to be stable and on their way here as we speak. And I, I do also want to note here, this information is just coming in, so bear with me here as I read this. But it appears that Ohad's mom, yeah, and his grandma are, are released as well. Uh, and it just gives you a sense of these families and the relief that they're going to have tonight. Oh. Kaylee. Praise God, uh, an answered prayer in, a, in an absolutely horrific situation. Trey Yanks, thank you so much for your phenomenal coverage, as always. Tammy Bruce, Ohad is freed. He celebrated his ninth birthday in cap captivity. Ohad was described as a bright kid who loves soccer, tennis, and solving the Ru Rubik's Cube. Uh, I hope they have a Rubik's Cube among those toys there. You know, it is uh, the reason why you, you don't second guess Israel's decisions here. This was and continues to be ransom to get those innocent people back home. There he is. Everyone ranging from the grandmothers to the children. Uh, this is his generation now is a generation that should never have to face this again. It has happened for two millennia against the Jews. This is what the world has seen. We've certainly, the 20th century, within living memory of the children at the camps being separated and gassed first. So this is something that, regarding the human condition, crimes against humanity, the, the focus and deliberation of Israel, of saving the innocent, their own innocent, the innocence of so many other nations involved in this now, but hopefully, that when it comes to the sentiment of the Israeli people, that this, they understand this can't continue. To do what you can to get as many innocent people out without once again giving up, which has been the history here of, this is why I think Hamas was surprised at the Israeli reaction, which is shocking, but this has been the circle uh, for now decades. Clearly, I think Israel knows it has to stop that the, ch the generation of the children leaving this terrorism, and this is psychological terrorism which continues, uh, has got to be the last generation that experiences this in this dynamic. No doubt about it. You know, Joe Concha, Ohad, uh, 
the photo, I, I'm not sure if this is the one we put up, but there was some Hebrew written on it when we first showed his photo here on Outnumbered. And the Hebrew said, you're welcome to celebrate my birthday. Um, so they wanted the nation, the globe, to celebrate Ohad's birthday, once a hostage, now a free nine-year-old boy. And it's great to hear that there is a mother and a grandmother yes. waiting thank God. for him. Thank God. My, my son turns nine this year. I know the mindset of an eight, nine-year-old boy. I can't imagine the hell that, that he uh, went through. But there's another birthday that's being celebrated today, and that's by Abigail Moore Adan. She's only three, now four years old today. And she, if she's released, she goes from one hell of being in these tunnels with these terrorists for 49 days and out to another where either she thinks she's going to be reunited with her parents who were murdered or she witnessed her parents being murdered and then she was taken hostage for 49 days. Mm -hmm. You talk about the human story here, Tammy, mm -hmm. that that's a story where you just wonder if a girl like that can ever have a normal life ever again. Yeah, no, well said. Um, Kara, and when we talk about uh, this kibbutz, as I mentioned, Kafir, the 10-month-old, the youngest hostage was from this kibbutz. So too is Ariel, his brother, his mom, Shiri, his dad, Yarden. And one of his family members wrote this, and, and I want to read it because I think it really puts the mind of our viewers in the mind of someone who has a family member in captivity. We must muster the little strength that we have to avoid falling apart. We try to resist the urge to anticipate hope, celebrate, or even imagine, because never before has anyone felt so close and yet so far away from something at the same time. I imagine there are hundreds of families out there with those exact feelings and emotions right now. Oh, and it's devastating when you think about, uh, you know, we're, we're mothers here. Uh, I couldn't imagine this happening to my own young child. And what I think we should bear witness to, I think it's, it's very much worth talking about what Israel sacrificed to do this, um, the moral character of their leadership in order to make this deal. When you think about it, they had a lot of momentum on the battlefield in Gaza. They sacrificed that. They're letting the Hamas terrorists refit, uh, rest, and shore up their defenses for the backside of this fighting. And they're doing it because they're saying, every one of our citizens matters. Women, children, every single one of them matters. So we are gonna give up that strategic positioning on the battlefield, knowing that it's gonna put IDF soldiers at risk on the backside of all this too. And they did it anyway, because that is who they are. That is who they are. And at the same time, you know, these families, you, you imagine these children coming home, these mothers coming home, there's the uncertainties. What state are they in? Psychologically, physically, emotionally? We know the Israeli government has gone to great pains knowing that for 49 days, these individuals were in, were in the dark, probably in cells, making sure they have glasses, noise canceling headphones, consulting with Holocaust su su survivors, excuse me, even to make sure every detail is perfect. Yeah, and I look at the picture of the children who are still over there, who have now been released and who will soon be getting off that bus. And I hope that every single leftist who was tearing down those posters in New York, in D.C., in cities across the country are forced to watch those children as they get off that bus and realize that those are the pictures that they were tearing down. Those are the innocent civilians that were trapped in Gaza in tunnels in the dark and were forced to suffer for 49 days. And I think you touch on an important point that even Trey mentioned, the psychological warfare that Hamas is still using in this to torture Israeli civilians is a very important element because the fact is that there are about 240 hostages, now about 220 hostages in Gaza. There is no guarantee that they're gonna get all 240 hostages back. There's no guarantee that all 240 hostages are going to be able to return to their homes because their homes have been burned, their family members have been killed. And the fact is that Hamas is holding that over Israel's head in an attempt to gain leverage and to prevent Israel from conducting its offensive mission. This needs to be addressed, and I wish that more outlets would spend time covering that aspect of it. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Well, as the first hostages are finally released from Hamas captivity today, the White House says it, quote, is doing all we can to free Americans still captive in Gaza. We'll bring you a live report on those efforts next. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.